Kyle O'Reilly per PW Insider contract coming up next month. It's November as we speak right now. Apparently, it expires the very end of December, so probably December 31st, if I had to take a guess. Um, and he is a free agent by January 1st. So, this made the rounds before Dynamite last night. Uh, again, like I said, PW Insider breaking the news. Is there really any question here as to where, as to whether he should leave or not? Because this, to me, feels like the Adam Cole situation all over again. I know you were more of the mindset maybe he should stay, give it a shot, which, you know, I understand to an extent. I feel like Kyle O'Reilly, it's even a more obvious outcome here. Not that he will leave, but rather that he should leave in the sense that at least if Adam Cole stayed, I do agree with you or with what we were talking about a couple of months ago. He had at least a decent shot at success on the main roster just because he is a bigger star. He's a great talker, a great athlete. Kyle O'Reilly is great too. I don't think this company sees him as a big star. The only place where he was going to become a you know a top champion was in NXT, and they clearly have not focused on him at all in NXT 2.0. Any character arc he had of becoming NXT champion and kind of avenging those losses to Finn Balor from earlier this year amounted to nothing, because after he beat Cole and had that huge win, the biggest win of his career, he went on a team with, let me check my notes here, Von Wagner, and it's gone literally nowhere since they lost a fucking Legato del Fantasma on the show. So that tells me they're going to probably stick them together for the foreseeable future. No sign of uh, O'Reilly being built up for a future NXT title shot. I think that ship sailed a while ago. So if I'm O'Reilly, I'm getting the fuck out of there and at least going to AEW. And listen, I like O'Reilly. I think we're both kind of on the same page where I think O'Reilly is very good. Um, You know, some people are trying to tell me he's a great single star. They should focus on him more. It depends what we're talking about here, dude. I don't think he's getting the singles push anymore in NXT. I think those days have come and gone in the new NXT. He ain't getting that push. He sure as hell is not getting pushed on the main roster. And in AEW, he doesn't need a singles push. I'd rather see him. I think there's some people that are just better suited as tag team guys. He, to me, is that guy. And I think in AEW, they have such a rich tag team division. And I don't think they would get lost in the shuffle because it's Red Dragon. Um, especially with Cole being there, you can play off of that. Maybe you reunite them at some point. That would be fucking sexy. To me, I I tweeted this last night, dude, but I really do not see any situation, any scenario as to why O'Reilly should stay. Can you convince me otherwise, or are you on the same uh, page as me on this? I mean, he... I still don't think Cole should have left. I mean, I'm still on that boat. I think the only thing that makes it more, I guess, worth leaving is they realistically should have called them up as a group. Once they started breaking them all off, I figured it was going to fall apart, and that's basically what he did for every member but Cole, and then he left. So, I, I mean, I like Kyle O'Reilly, but I don't see him as this big breakout single star that people might think he is. Um, Von Wagner's fucking terrible. I actually hadn't seen him work, really. Watched the match the other night, I'm like, this guy is not good. <laughs> um, and O'Reilly, I don't know why the hell O'Reilly would want to stay to work with him, because it just doesn't do anything. It's not, I just don't think there's any future for him. I feel like he's like one of those veterans that's still there, and he'll probably be working more mentoring or putting people over than actually like winning. So I would leave if I was him. I just now looking back, I just feel like they really screwed the pooch on the whole undisputed era. They should have called them up as a group. I understand the pandemic happened; there wouldn't have been no reaction. But I mean, if you called them up and treated them well, I think all four guys still would be in the company, and they'd be at a at a top level right now. And two of them are gone, and. I mean, I like the Diamond Mine stuff, but I feel like Roddy's a group guy, too. Like, he's not the greatest singles guy, so he kind of needs the group. And Kyle, I feel like he's a tag team guy as well. So, uh, if I was Kyle, I would definitely leave. Yeah, it's amazing to think, too, not even one year ago, not even one full 365 days ago, did we have a War Games event with those four men in it um, winning the match, actually. Cole, Strong, O'Reilly, Fish, beating, who was it, uh... Pete Dunn, who haven't we haven't seen on the show in at least a week or two. I don't know what happened to him. He just re-signed and he hasn't been on the show lately. So maybe I don't know. If it, I don't think he made the wrong choice, but that's just weird. Um, they beat Pete Dunn, Lorkin, and Birch, who aren't even on the show anymore. They broke away from Pete. They got you know betrayed by Pete, and we haven't seen them since. They're probably on the chopping block. And then who was the fourth guy? In there? Oh, McAfee, obviously. Pat, Pat McAfee. McAfee. He's yeah, on SmackDown. Yeah. I was going to say he's on SmackDown. I was, so was Ridge Holland. I was going to say Ridge Holland was in that match, but that was after he got hurt and he got called up. So, I don't know. It's just in a complete disarray right now. It's amazing how much a year, how much can change in a year, and specifically with those four guys. I don't want to go so far as to say is that it would have been a slam dunk with Undisputed Air on the main roster. I've always said it was more of a chance that they would fail than succeed, just given how Vince views people like that, like Cole and people on the smaller side. But I've always said it's worth the shot, though. It's worth the shot. I would have always preferred 
them staying as a unit and going to Raw or SmackDown, then breaking up an NXT, and doing what? Because a lot of these guys, like a guy like Strong has done everything in NXT, so he's got Diamond Mine now, he's doing great work now with that group. But beyond that, Cole has been champion a million times. Why would he stay O'Reilly when he broke off from them beyond becoming NXT champion, which I think was a possibility maybe a couple of months ago, which I don't see happening now. He was kind of fucked. Fish was fucked. They fired him. I don't know. I think it's starting to make more sense now as to why Fish is being featured more prominently in AEW because they might have an idea that O'Reilly's on his way in. So I, I honestly think, dude, by early 2020 or 2022, there's a good chance we can get the original Undisputed Era in AEW, which is honestly very sad considering the beginning of this whole war. I don't know if you want to call it that, which it's not. But between NXT and AEW, the Undisputed Era were the best thing going in NXT. And within the span of two years, two and a half years, that entire group, or most of it anyway, might be in AEW. That, that's a pretty sad stat in my opinion. No, it's not good. I mean, I just feel like they went in a total different direction, and now they're focusing on young guys, and I like them three guys, so I just feel like they're on the older side. At least, I know Fish is in his 40s. I'm not sure about O'Reilly. I think he might be a little bit. I know Cole's not the oldest, but I think O'Reilly might be in his mid-30s. I know Fish is in his 40s, so I can see why he want to maybe step away from them, but I just feel like they were such a slam dunk, and... <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like they, like you said, they screwed the pooch on it. They should have went with them and at least try it out. We all, like, at least give it a gentleman's try. They didn't even do that, so. Yeah, I would love to know the full story behind that, though, because O'Reilly, or rather Cole, has done a lot of interviews talking about Undisputed Era. Fish has talked a lot about Undisputed Era since his release from the company in various interviews. I would love to know, though, from their standpoint, or maybe they don't even know. Maybe it's a Triple H question, which he would never answer publicly. I would love to know if it was a WWE thing where they didn't want them on the main roster or if Triple H really wanted to keep all four of them. Like, what would you chalk it up to? Do you think it was their decision to stay? I mean, I, I've spoken to all of them, and they all sounded like they would want to go to the main roster as a group. So I don't think that's it. I think it's more of the fact that maybe Triple H tried to keep them or Vince just didn't want them in the main roster, which I find incredibly hard to believe because if he if he sees money being printed in NXT with a certain group, I mean, they call the fucking sanity. So why wouldn't they call up Undisputed Era? That's my question. I don't know. I just I feel like maybe they were waiting. They were going to call him up, but then the whole pandemic happened. They didn't want to call him out without yeah, yeah. a crowd. Then they kind of really weren't doing anything. Then they broke him up. Once you broke him up, they were fucked at that point, so... Yeah, it's just, it's sad, because I really think, uh, maybe we'll see them rekindle that success. I, I guarantee you, Tony Khan's not a moron. They would bring them back together at some point in AEW, at some point down the road. O'Reilly and Cole follow each other to whatever company they go to, whether it be New Japan, or Ring of Honor, or NXT, and now AEW. So, I'm almost positive we're going to see that at some point, and uh, I think it's for the better. I'm not one of these people, like, oh, this person should go to AEW, like every person. Like, certain people make sense. Owens makes sense to me. O'Reilly makes sense. And I was not clamoring for Tony Nese to get signed. He got signed by AEW, so... I think if O'Reilly were to go, though, he's a tag team guy. Like, I don't really care to see him facing Sammy for the TNT title, which would be awesome, don't get me wrong, but I don't really see him getting a singles push. I feel like it would be men of the year 2.0. Like, they brought in Ethan Page with absolutely nothing to do for him, so they put him in a fucking tag team, Scorpio Sky. I don't think that... I mean, at least that was a random tag team. This is a, more of a tag team that's established. And I think them against the Bucks again and... The Elite and other teams and then in AEW, I think, would be a lot of fun. So I think the writing is on the wall for O'Reilly, and I feel like even more so than Cole, if he were to stay, the guy only has himself to blame for what is to happen to him from there, which I don't think would be very good. I feel like it's going to be more Von Wagner shit, more tag team stuff with him, and God, you know, God knows what else they would have in mind for O'Reilly and WWE if he were to stay in NXT. 